All right, we're gonna pick Min once again. We're gonna have good Dandori. Isn't there a type of liquor called... J what is it? Jindori? Something. Well, there's Midori. Suntory. I thought there was uh, another one that was like Jim Dory. Who is Jim Dory? Is it? We got any chat members here by the name of Jim Dory? Guess not. So, last I played Pikmin, it was Pikmin 2. Well, specifically, it was, um, it was Bikmin 2, 269, I think it was. And I fought this exact thing, but it had Princess Peach's face. So now here we are. And I'm playing Pikmin 4 again, so now I have to remember how to play Pikmin 4. At least I know how to fight the enemy. Oh no, my Barack Pikmin! Alright, uh, one of them died. It's fine, it's fine. Why doesn't it have Princess Peach's face, chat? Did it shrink massively? Oh, when the soul leaves the body, it shrinks, I think. You're dead. Oh, wait, no. Oh, you have to... Okay, Pikmin can help. I see. Honey. Oh. Dingo. An officer who excels at solo missions. Not a joiner by nature, but he'll show up and lend his physical abilities when need be. I knew it. I knew he was tough enough to make it. Dingo's a skilled ranger, even though he doesn't use a rescue pup, he specializes in solo missions, you see. One thing's for certain, rescue missions should be a lot easier with his help. Chat, I saw vitriol against this dog. Because I saw someone that wanted, like, a custom bulb orb. Is that what they're named? Like, the small bugs? The, the famous Pikmin bugs? Like a green one or something? And they were like... Um, I would rather some, like, a small green bulb orb as opposed to marketable dog. It's like, I get the point that you're making here. I do. I understand. However, you know, the dog is fine. You can't pet the dog as far as I'm aware, but... Why can't you have them both? Yeah, I agree. Both would be nice. But I don't mind the dog. And the dog had nothing to, to leave the dog out of this. How's the game? I've only played it, um, the demo. And I've played it again for like three hours. So, I, yeah, I got a four and a half, five hours in the game. And I can tell you that I hate that. No, I love this game so far. I think it is wonderful. Also, the quality of life stuff, after playing Bikman... Oh, no, 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 fuck you, motherfucker! Fuck you, motherfucker, no! Oh, 
Oh, they can't get through. Oh. But yeah, I'm noticing now, like, the, the Bickman thing was a good refresher on uh, the differences between the games. So yeah, I feel, I feel like... I feel like it's really easy to play compared to the previous ones, and it's like a good starting point for new players, even. They're stuck. Chat, they're stuck. Okay, now they're not. It gets harder. Oh yeah, well this is still, like, not very far in the game. Where is marketable dog? Ah, shit. Oops. Chat, I think I may be fucked up a little bit. I'm gonna try to kill this enemy real quick while I have the opportunity. Mm, I hate that noise! Don't do that to them! Chat, what button, um, do I hold to get Ochi again? The- the dog friend? You hold Y? Oh, man. You can assign it to a shortcut. So, so, uh, shortcuts. Let's, let's talk about doing shortcuts, huh? Shortcut settings. So we got Survey Drone, Ultra Spicy sp uh, Spray, we got Missions. We've got... I guess we could, uh, we can do... Commands? No? Uh, yeah, commands, or... Switch. Wow, I'm cool. Alright. It's the first one. You can only use that when holding your Joy-Con controller in solo horizontal grip. It's fine, I don't need to fuck around with that right now. Um... Good dog. They better not- oh, okay, good. I was gonna say, they better not fucking, like, die if I do that.
I also, I am missing the um, right stick to like get them in a formation. Charge is definitely good. But man, I forgot how much I really like that right stick thing. That, that works too. That that makes things kind of easy. They all just go directly to the thing and pick it up. That's nice. All treasure collected. How good is the sound design in this game? I love it. It's funny that you should say that because hearing that noise just now, I was I just had like an O face. I'm sorry, I meant Steve-O face. I looked like Steve-O when I heard it. That's normal, right? Alright, let's see what we got here, chat. If you missed out on last time's uh, stream of this, I basically entered a dungeon. That's what this is. It's like, um, they're called caves, obviously. Which, you know, if you've played Breath of the Tears of the Kingdom, then maybe you'll have some experience with that. But yeah, you go through caves, and they're they're like kind of mini dungeons, and uh... Oh, what do we got here? I don't like its face! It's got a weird face! It looks like a fish! Do that. It exploded into dice. War cry. In um, which uh, one of the Monty Python movies where he's trying to kill the guy with a banana? Of course that. Of course that's a thing in Monty Python. If you've never watched it or you've only been tangentially aware of it, um, of course that's a, a thing. But in that movie, and now for something completely different, at one point he's like. Show us your war cry, and he goes, ah! And that reminds me, for some reason, of the Pikmin. Oh, those can fit through, okay. Vinny, I'm tired of talking about the banana or any other fruit. Talk about guns. <laughs> what about an up apricot? Shut up! What about if he's got a pointed stick? This is the episode of the of the program where Vinny talks about an old show. 
Except this one's from 50 years ago. If you can believe it. Well, when did M Monty Python aired in, in, uh, 68 or 69? Nice, but... Huh. It's a long time ago. Damn, Vinny was a teenager when Monty Python came out. I feel old. <laughs> No, I think, um, I know you're, you're being, uh, I know what you're doing. You're making, like, a joke at my expense. And, and, uh, see, I can tell. I know now. It took me 13 years to figure these things out, but I got it. Uh, but no, actually, I think their last movie was what year? 82? 84? So yeah, I was not really... I wasn't born by the time they had stopped making film. It's amazing how comedy hasn't progressed since Monty Python. No, this is a joke! No, this is a joke! I am not that much of a boomer. <clears throat> Trust me, I'm telling you, chat. I was watching Eric Andre show, and he, like... Like, uh, got naked, and then landed on a guest, and then slimed him. So, I'm telling you, no, it, there's been a lot of advancements. Time is a flat circle. No, he did, he actually ripped his clothes off, and then he, uh, like... Yeah, and then, like, he was like, oh, sorry, this was, like, the old Nickelodeon studio building. And then green slime, like, fell from the sky onto the person. That sounds like the Grey Leno show. You know, chat, I might have to, uh, get Grey Leno to sue Eric Andre for coming up with that idea before Grey Leno did. Get ready, listen, chat, get ready. Did you see that he has a show with Knoxville now? No, I might have to watch that. Though. Oh, ho, 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 what a noise that is! Jonathan Knoxville. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, but what we do in the shadows has been pretty entertaining this season. Maybe even a little bit better so far than the last couple seasons. Which I definitely had some good episodes, but I was a little iffy on them. Oh no! Oh, I really don't like this thing. It looks like a Gungan. It looks like Boss Nest. Ja ja! <laughs> we are gonna go to the planet. Note, do not imitate Boss Nass while playing Pikmin. No matter how tempting.
the loathsome cock gobblers. I don't know what to do here, chat. Not that one. Okay, I know what to do now. And attack from that side. No, fuck you! Alright, that wasn't a complete massacre. It was only a, a so somewhat of a massacre. Vinny, have you heard about Valve's secret project, Neon Prime? No, it, it wouldn't be a secret if I'd heard about it. Dalmo. He loves animals, they love him. Researcher at heart, his passion for other creatures is, is a gen as genuine as his smile. I wouldn't know smile. Listen, I can understand, like, what, during the podcast uh, with Wooly and Pat yesterday, we were talking about Pikmin. I was like, hey, you guys gonna play Pikmin? And Pat was like, I'm sure it's a good game. I'm sure it is a wonderful game. But when I look at it, I don't want to play it. And when I look at Colin's face there, I see that character Colin in the bottom left there, and I understand. Um. How many civilians decided it'd be a good idea to go trap sing trap sing off to this planet? Never had to say that word out loud, ever. Tri- 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 sing? Is it? Tri- tri- Also, there's an episode of Always Sunny. Dennis takes a mental health day. I haven't really been that hot on new Always Sunny. Like, I've, I've been pretty clear about this. It hasn't done much for me. Some fine episodes, but it feels like they're, they're trying to write Sunny episodes instead of just writing them. And I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it does to me in my own head. It's, listen, they're older. The show is, um... It's- it's a hard show to do. Like, these days. And it's especially difficult when everyone involved is, like, 20 years older. I think. And, you- you're on, like, what? Season 16, 17? So, yeah, it- it's... Uh, to me, I'm not surprised that the episodes haven't been amazing. That said, the Dennis Takes a Mental Health Day episode actually made me laugh a number of times. It's fully, in, in, like, completely insane. And I think some people are probably just not gonna like it. But I ended up weirdly liking it. it it's like... the right kind of insane. And it, it... it made me laugh a lot. I was like, oh, this, this feels like a classic episode. When did it start getting meh? I guess for me, Always Sunny started feeling a little bit forced. Six or seven years ago?
Chat, what do I do with that screw up there? That's just a marker? Okay. It's just an auto-aim point, I understand. Someone just asked me my favorite paper towel brand. Like, like why? Have we really run out of questions for me? Oh, no, 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 I'm just doing market research. That's right. Have you heard of the new Charmin Ultra? That's toilet paper? Oh. I usually don't give a fuck about, uh, the thing in lo as long as it cleans up shit. You know what I mean? Why, why can't these Pikmin come out? According to Voyage Log, only three types of Pikmin can be out on the surface at any given time. Oh, okay. Oh, oh god. Oh god. You're fine? Even so, chat. Even so. Let me just... Uh, now I feel much better. On your... And cut the onion. You can dice the onion. But do not slice. The onion. Someone said they missed the ship, Luigi. I know. That was my favorite Pikmin character, too. Ship Luigi. If we're going to restore the SS Shepherd's radar and expand our search area, we need you to go out and gather more sparklium. Boy. So the timeline of this game has pissed a lot of Pikmin fans off because apparently this is like a sequel to Pikmin 1. I don't know what exactly is going on here, but there seems to be some kind of Ocarina of Time timeline line split or maybe some kind of like timey-wimey shit. 
Either that or Nintendo just does not give a fuck about continuity. Guess which one I think it is. Unless they, I don't know, unless at the end of the game it's like spelled out. There's Pikmin lore nerds. Oh yeah, there's there's nerds for everything. There are Grey Leno nerds that exist right now that know every appearance. I'm just reading this to myself. Feel free to do the same. Honestly, the, I love this game. I love this series. These characters are gormless as fuck. Would you be? Um, a green Pikmin. That's all I got. A shroom Pikmin. <laughs> We saw the leaf creature pick up someone else and toss them onto a big pup. Bernard and I tried to follow, but we were too late. The leaf creature in charge spotted us. We got out there as fast as we could. What's this leafling doing here anyway, and why are they unconscious? Bernard and I sort of coined the term leafling. Yeah, yeah. We need to find Yanni? <laughs> Wait, Laurel or Yanni? Okay, so we got the Piclopedia now. Pretty die. Pretty die? Nice. I wonder if there's a Pikmin battle pass. Dwarf bulb orb. Oh, you can even engage them. That's cool. Um, so you can observe them. This one is dead. As you can see here. Oh, you can just fuck with them if you want. Whoa, 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 spoilers! Alright, I'd be one of these Pikmin then.
green Pikmin. That's satisfying. Wow, this is the best Piclopedia ever. A lot of interesting creatures. Waddlequaff? That's your name? I'm sorry your parents named you that. Hello, my dudes. Welcome to the Mixology Bar. I'll be your steward for the evening, Waddlequaff. Now that's spelled with a Q, but the Q is silent. Wait, no, but the Q is right there. I know, it's so silent you actually pronounce it again. Schnoz. Noted appraiser of treasures. Okay. Observe. Chat, observe this duck. Look at those adorable feathers and darling proportions. This creature may be me rather medium in size. But that does not mean it's a medium amount of cuteness. No, I'm quite certain it possesses enough cuteness to charm an entire planet. Planetary Rubber Cutie. Sweet Stumble Knot. <laughs> the writing is actually really funny for a lot of these. What a sweet stick this is. Quite literally, the stick here is made of candy from top to bottom. This unexpected combination makes it quite the handy thing to have around. You can use it as a walking stick to prevent yourself from stumbling while hiking or exploring unfamiliar terrain. When all that exertion makes you hungry, you'll find a s sustenance right there in your hand. A useful invention to be sure. Deceptive snack. Cookie of nibbled circles. Cookie of prosperity. SS chocolate. Sticky jewel. Orb of destruction. Orbital communication sphere. Disc of joyous wisdom. Floral instigator. Perforated raft. Memory fragment bottom right. Flaky temptation. Sunseed berry. Searing acid shock. Lesser mock bottom. I, that is a great name for it. A mock bottom. It's true. The rounded surface of this fruit is smooth as a baby's bottom. Meanwhile, the pale yellow flesh inside offers a refreshing flavor profile that is at once sweet and sour. Really, as fruits go, it has much to offer. Dusty bed? Huh. So many treasures, chat. Isn't something like this an Animal Crossing? Heat sensor. Octoplus. Alien invasion? No, no, it's just octopus. Or is it? Or an octopus, is it? 
There's something quite strange about this one. Could it be a new species, perhaps? Well, whatever it is, the way its adorable beady eyes stare unblinkingly at me, I'm almost certain it is communicating telepathically with me. Here's the good shit. Micromanagement station. This desk features a built-in display surely used to show important things such as maps and vital statistics. No doubt many heated discussions have taken place over the matters shown here. One hopes that those who worked and fought at this desk also took breaks for rest and frivolity. Masterpiece Plank. This yellow plank, simply marvelous. The text upon it, indecipherable, yet somehow moving. Could it be some sort of story? A masterpiece, I'm sure of it. How exasperating it is to not be able to read it, even as it sits right here before me. Stone of Advancement. I love this thing so much. Notice how resplendent the blue of this slab is. It's called cobalt blue. The pigment is extracted from an ore renowned for honing one's intuition, intelligence, and reflexes. Yes, the more I gaze upon it, the more advanced I feel myself become. <laughs> Yam is just daughter of the earth. Satellite shield. Aspiration ritual ball. Gold nugget. I don't think I've ever said this about a game before, but this uh, Pikmin game here is a very rich experience. Ex inspect the music box again for an Easter egg. Mackie. Idle counter? Shows how many Pikmin are standing idle. No time to lollygag on a rescue mission. A lot of upgrades. Idlers alert. Why manually collect Pikmin that have completed their tasks when you can summon them with this? Hell yeah! Tough stuff. No training necessary to achieve this. HP increase. Indeed, there is no force in the universe more powerful than science. Wow, it's like modern Star Trek dialogue. Fuck yeah, science! Bomb rock. Mine. I should mention, yeah, I watched the crossover between Strange New Worlds and, uh, the animated show, and, um, I do like the animated show. I haven't seen much of season two otherwise. I just wanted to watch that one episode. And yeah, they just talk like modern people a good chunk of the show. Like, not entirely, but, like, I get that it's a comedy show crossed over with a sillier version of Star Trek, like, but there's just something about it that I'm not into. I'm probably still going to try to watch some episodes here and there, but... but um... It's like... Oh my god, you're, uh, you're Uhura. Oh my god, you're Captain Pike. Like, I get that's the point of the show, because, like, Boimler is a, a dumbass, but... I don't know, man. I'm going to upgrade dog. Strength of 10 Pikmin. Hmm, that's pretty good, but I might save that. Holy crap, it's Mr. Spruck. Yeah, it's kind of like that. I mean, I enjoyed a lot of season one of Strange New Worlds, and I like that animated show more than most other of the recent Star Trek stuff, but I'm still, there's something that repulses me from it. 
Like when a character calls themselves a badass, like that's just I don't know something about that is like I, I sorry I can't I can't get into that. Um. Oh okay. Investigate area one one hundred percent. Okay. There's a chat member that told me to interact with some of the treasures, and I want to do that real quick. Aha! Uh -huh. There you go. I didn't realize there was another, um... Another way to do this. Good, good tune. Let's see if this has a tune. Ah, oh, no, there's no tune here. Enjoy. I'm ready to do some more Pikmin. We gotta pick some Min. We're gonna do it. Did you expect an asshole to appear for the thermometer? <laughs> no, I expected the the, uh, the new Twitter name to appear. So yeah, same thing. Luigi, do you ever check your temperature? Oh, of course I do, Mario. No, I'm talking about with a rectal thermometer, Luigi. That's the most accurate way to see if you have a fever. Really? That's very interesting, Mario. Would you like to demonstrate? Nope! I definitely would not! Did you see Homelander and Peacemaker in Mortal Kombat? Yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit on the podcast yesterday. Uh, I, not my podcast, for anyone who wasn't listening earlier. I was on Wooly and Pat's podcast. Um... I find the Homelander thing to be kind of funny because there's a couple layers to it. The intent of the boys was to poke fun at marketable superheroes and like the um, the whole like Superman, you know, hype thing. And I don't know how to explain it, but there's some part of me that finds Homelander being a playable character in a Mortal Kombat game to be somewhat out of character. But then... If you think about what the fictional company in the world of the boys would do, they would absolutely license out Homelander to Mortal Kombat. No doubt about it. So yeah, I don't really know, um... Uh, oh, 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 uh, command, right? So hang on, if I want to do a shortcut to, like... Idler's alert. That is wonderful. What a nice thing that is.
Also, increased charge time. Perfect choice. Very pleased with that choice. So we were up there. I know there were some more, um, monsters. Sorry, insects. That I have not yet, uh, found. <laughs> well, before we do that... Get his ass. killed on the way back to the onion. Oh, I think they'll be alright. Mysterious onion bulb. Bulbous onion. They're like, God damn it, just went all that way. Yeah, that command changes, like, so much. That makes your Dandori so much better. That's the spicy juice? Oh, that's the spicy juice. There are 20 more Pikmin than before. The new one just gets turned into nutrients. Oh, okay. I thought that was a, a limit increase, but... But we'll get to that. I want to spend some time enjoying the outdoors because it is quite nice out here. This game is very nice visually. But I wish to enjoy outside. It was like beautiful out today, chat. And then it fucking rained and thundered violently. Like, the sky was completely dark for a short time. And there was even a chance of hail. And it was like 85 degrees at one point, too. I say beautiful, but yeah, 85 is a little much. But when it, it went down to like 80, 
high 70s, and I was- I was like, uh, this is Fahrenheit, by the way. If it was Celsius, we'd be on the sun. Weather is the highest form of conversation, remember that. Should we talk about the weather? I, I, I. Uh, try a hundred degrees in Puerto Rico. Uh, no thank you. Good luck out there, friend. Red alert, we have another castaway. And there's a leafling, too. It may be the leafling that attacked Dingo. Be careful now. It's definitely them, which means it could be Bernard on the ground. Bernardo! Next to them. do their silly little thing first. <laughs> well, I didn't know a dog could do that. No, we're fine. Uh. I'll be dead. I think that's actually any faster. A new cave unlocked. Fruit unlocked, too. Well, they might be a while over there, so we can explore. Which, again, is, is from what I understand, the word Dandori. That's the purest definition of it. Managing your time efficiently. Oh, they can't even go over there, huh? Vinny, if you say Dandori one more time, I'm gonna prime sub. Don't think I won't. Looks like I accidentally said Dandori again. 
Oh, oh, that's interesting, by the way. Did you know that you could sub for free uh, to the Vine Sauce channel via Amazon Prime? Someone said, I'm sorry, I already gave it to Germa. How dare you? No, that's fine. I'd rather it Germa than Skirma. I never liked that guy. Okay, um... I mean, if you're not using your Prime sub and you're actually doing that right now, that's fine and everything. I appreciate it. But, like, please... Please understand that as someone who's already pretty fortunate, I actually don't need your money. Unless it's for a charity. And yes, I have to say that, because I don't feel right otherwise. I'm just gonna let that happen right there. Chad, if I go in here, will it bring my Pikmins to me? It will. Okay. It will stop any carrying. That I remember. Okay. Your Pikmin cannot join you. Oh, well, this is a Dandori challenge. Why are there fire emojis on the screen right now? Oh, wow. oh. Evil dog. Evil. Those who do not embrace Dandori cannot survive on this planet. But if they grow the leaves, they will thrive. You skin-having one. Do you believe you do not need the leaves? I will test your abilities to see if that is true. This is so weird. Find objects, transfer them back to your base to win within the time limit. Collect the highest total combined weight. Wait, we don't need split-screen. Why do we need split-screen for this? You don't even have to pick them. Then why call it Pikmin at that point? Thanks, that's mine. I can't fight that right now. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, fuck you, dog! <laughs> oh, you piece of shit! Oh, 
Oh god, no, my dog! Dog, dog! I don't know why I'm getting goofy. Sorry, <laughs> getting a little goofy right now. This is like an actual heated battle. Bodied. Idiot. Oh shit. Mine. That's mine. Alright, fine. Take it. I don't care anymore. Much like Phil Collins. Superior Dandori on display right here. The strength of your Dandori power is magnificent. I will return this one to you. Yeah, but he's already purple now. He's leaves. Whoever they are, they weren't lying. Your Dandori talents are on full display. Let's get this castaway out of here. I enjoyed that. Vinny, in your opinion, which Pikmin would taste the best boiled with butter? The purple one. Aww. They really are growing leaves out of their head. They seem to be suffering from the same condition um, as that leafy individual you just challenged. Aww. I'm the paper one, and I do what I want. Transport them back to the SS Beagle right away. Someone said, if not for Zelda, this would be my game of the year. Well, that's good to hear. Someone earlier said that they watched me play this one time and checked out the franchise and they love it. Like I said, this game has a, a kind of a... an image problem, I think, because it just seems dumb. 
for a lot of people, as I've heard from many people and have also felt when Pikmin 1 came out. I didn't really understand what the appeal was. I just was like, what, plants and things? Let's screw that. So yeah, it doesn't sell as well as uh, some of the other stuff, but I think it's as fun. Drafty Gallery. Yeah, this, this year has turned out to be an amazing year for video games. I describe it as pe to people as StarCraft for people with lives. That's an amazing way to describe it. I don't 100% agree with it, but I love it. But I kind of describe it as like a, a really easy console, easy to pick up console real-time strategy game that makes sense once you play it for an hour. Which maybe StarCraft for people with lives is a better way to say that, but... Are we? This was just under the garden? This is like a fucking super monkey ball level. Vinny, which Pikmin feels the best up your urethra? Do not clip that. Do not clip that. I only read it out loud because I thought it would be funny. And I would appreciate if that wasn't a clip. I know that's confusing, chat, but... So life is confusing. Which is why I think the white Pikmin would feel the best. He's quiet. How hard do you think this game would be if you didn't upgrade your equipment, or Ochi? Um... Yeah. It would be a little harder, I think. I'm, I'm still a little early in the game, so I couldn't tell you, but I think it would be more difficult, for sure. I think... Maybe... More difficult isn't the best way to say it. Maybe just... Like, you just spend more time... Oops. Uh, doing things, like going back to your Pikmin to retrieve them. More time-consuming. But I guess you can... 
you know, if you want more of a challenge, that's something that you could do. So it's, it's nice to have the option. Like, we were also talking about the difficulty in Final Fantasy uh, 16, which I'm finding to be on the easier side. And I don't play a lot of um, character action games. Like, we, um, Wooly and Pat play a lot of Devil May Cry and Bayonetta, but they then play them on the hardest difficulty. Which, of course, I do not. And I'm still feeling like Final Fantasy 16 is on the, uh, the easier side. Not, like, overly easy for someone like me. Because, you know, I need a little... I need a little bit of, uh, ease in my video gaming, otherwise I get frustrated. And I'm not the best gamer in the world, so I don't mind if the game skews a little easier, because I'm experiencing Final Fantasy more for the story anyway. But, we were talking about how it would be nice if that game had more difficulty options. You have to unlock it. Uh. Candy pop bud. You're transformed into a Pikmin that matches the color of the flower. The flesh colored flower. What's the hardest RPG you've ever played? Oh man, I don't have a good answer for that. Does Elden Ring count? I'm not gonna count Elden Ring in regards to hardest RPG. I don't know, that doesn't feel right. Final Fantasy IV DS. Actually, that's a great answer because I gave up playing that. I got to the moon and I gave up. So that's probably the fucking answer. I know that was near the end. I, one day I'd like to replay Final Fantasy IV, but I know that game is also... Pretty, um, that's another lengthy game, so I'd have to find the time for it, but it is a, a very good game, and the fucking music is so good. Just remember the, the dungeon areas, there were like, just so many floors of the same random battles and stuff. But that's also kind of what you get from a lot of the older RPGs, but... I did like the game a lot. I never played Final Fantasy XIII. Pixel remaster or DS version? Oh, I don't know. I haven't decided. Vinny, can you give my friend a shout-out? He loves watching your anime. What? Someone said Skies of Arcadia. Skies of Arcadia is a pretty balanced game. I was frustrated more about the game's encounter rate. It's not difficult, but it just gets a little frustrating. Because it's just like... I feel like that game is 10 hours of just, like, walking two feet and then random battle. Even the GameCube version, which fixes a lot of that, we've discussed this on the stream plenty of times, but... So yeah, no, I don't remember that game having, like, insane difficulty. More so that it was just a lot of, like, time spent in random battles. Which, again, you know what you're signing up for when you play a classic JRPG. But that's also kind of another reason why I love Secret of Mana, is you can just kind of avoid fights a little bit, but then if you avoid fights, you're fucked, because then you aren't leveled enough. Again, Chrono Trigger is, like, to me, 
even a little too easy. Without any grinding. And I play Chrono Trigger with a little bit of grinding. I don't do too much, but I have a couple spots where I, I spend some time. But yeah, I do, I do love that game's, like, um, MO, which is just, you can play it if you do the side quests. There's not too many of them. But they're all really well done. There's all really good story. They all flesh out a specific character. But even if you don't, the game is still very doable. You're gonna struggle at the Black Omen, or you're gonna struggle with Lavos, so it's worth doing them. But you could still, you know, spend some time elsewhere if you want. But yeah, for me, that game has got... Like, I, I can't have enough good things to say about that game. But it respects your time. Like, the pacing is really good, the fucking side quests are good. You're not stuck grinding for hours and hours, you're just enjoying. You're playing and enjoying. Unrelated, but are you going to play the Shrek racing game when it releases? I like how you're telling me this as if I knew about the Shrek racing game. <laughs> no, I didn't know. What do you mean Shrek racing game? DreamWorks Racing? Marketing manager in chat, yeah. How's it going, fellow consumers? Have you heard about the new DreamWorks Racing game? No, I haven't. Uh, will I check it out? Depends on if I have to buy the game. Like, I don't think it would be that funny. Hey, Vinny. Hey, Vinny, I'm the Urethra chat member from earlier. I was wondering if you knew in the new Oppenheimer movie... Sloppenheimer says, Urethra, when he makes the bomb. Yep. That's what he, that's what he says. He says, yep. Mm-hmm. Mods, ban, ban that chat member. This can't keep happening. Like, this can't keep happening. He says, it's oppen time. Yeah, I like that part, too. I like when, um, op, op, Oppenheimer style. I like when that song played. I thought it was maybe slightly inappropriate to play that right after he makes the bomb. Spoilers, by the way. Yeah, uh, there's- it's funny because the thing that makes me laugh about the Oppenheimer stuff is 
yeah, like, Einstein showed up like an MCU character, yes. Look, even in my garbage brain, I also was thinking that. And I know that's been a huge meme across the internet at this point. And, um, you know, like, teasing, they even teased the, uh, JFK thing a little bit. I say thing because, you know, just his presidency, but also maybe his assassination. So I was like, I can see a, a connected JFK film, but we really, uh, the, the MCU certainly has changed a lot of things. I also see a lot of people upset about the, uh, minor bits of nudity in the Oppenheimer movie, as if it's, like, horrendous. I, I, heard, I, I read a story about someone, like, some college age person walking out of the theater because there was a titty on screen for a minute even though I understand the point of the titty it wasn't just because look everybody titty it, it was actually relevant to the character and the vulnerability of the characters and I thought it made sense but that's like another thing people are complaining about too <laughs> it's just I don't even man Someone said it wasn't needed, not gonna lie. Alright. I mean, you're allowed to disagree with the filmmaker. Vulnerability? Yeah. Well, the two characters at one point are... Like... In each other's- it, you, if you watch the movie, it makes sense. I'm not saying it- is it a great decision for the film? I don't know, I'm not the director. I- I thought it was fine, I understood what they were going for, but the two characters are... ...talking to each other. And they are vulnerable with each other. So I think it- it is like, there's a story reason for it, and not just to titillate. Trust me when I say, I don't think anyone's going to the Oppenheimer movie... ...to have like a nice little wank fantasy. Like, oh, I gotta, can't wait to go see Oppenheimer. I want to get my Sloppenheimer on. Yeah. Hey, that's just my opinion. So I kind of understand what he's doing, but I think people just aren't used to that kind of thing in movies these days. And um, that's just another outrage bait topic. So. I thought that was going to be a lot harder than it was, actually. Ice Pikmin are strong as fuck. Someone said, is Oppenheimer worth seeing if I'm not interested in J. Robert Oppenheimer as a person? That's an interesting question. For years, the scholar has been working to achieve his lifelong dream to create an atomic bomb. Oh, uh, to reach a mutual understanding with plant life. Kopchi. Um... Well, I think it's a good movie, but I have some issues with it, of course. It's not a perfect movie by any means. It's, um... You have to... Pe if you stop paying attention to it, it can get confusing. Some of the non-linear editing doesn't... I don't think needed to happen. But there are genuinely some great moments. I wasn't interested in J. Robert Oppenheimer. Who the fuck wanted to learn, learn about this dude? I didn't give a shit. But I went and saw the movie because I, you know... It looked like an interesting movie. Nolan has made movies I've liked, like, um, The Prestige, Memento, shit like that, Dunkirk. And, uh, I was rewarded for it because I can't stop thinking about the movie. But that's kind of what movies do. You may not be interested immediately, but then, like, they can kind of... If the movie's good, it can maybe turn you on to a, a topic that you had no interest in previously. Uh, but I 
after watching the movie, I kind of understand what was meant by this was the most important human figure in the past century or more, maybe ever. Because without him, we wouldn't uh, have the power to completely fucking destroy ourselves and our planet. And it's a complex situation that the movie explores in an interesting way. Is everyone gonna like this movie? Nope. Did I like it? Yeah. They should make a movie about the guy who invented leaded gasoline. Or asbestos. But don't- don't worry, Chad, that's what's happening, like, they're now making movies based on, like, Beanie Babies, and, like, Blackberries, and Nikes. So, the longer we live, the more movies we will see of just people that made things that we consume. So we're gonna get all that stuff. When I say asbestos, I mean, like, maybe the dude who thought it would be a good idea to have people, like, you know, hang out near asbestos, and also, didn't they put asbestos in cigarettes at one point? Jesus Christ, imagine... Huh. Man, I say we, uh, we cancel John Asbestos. What do you think, chat? All right, everyone, take to, tw uh, take to X. Get on there. Quick. Throw out some zeets. So would you say we live in the stupidest timeline? That's right, asbestos. Delicious filters for your cigarettes. How the hell did we not wipe ourselves out long ago? Aliens, chat member, you understand, right? Because they, they have been spotted at nuclear silos, uh, and they have shot lasers at uh, nuclear weaponry that was fired and disabled those nukes. So they're from the future. They saw what we were going to do, and they went back to those moments to stop us from nuking ourselves. So, anyway, we'll learn all that tomorrow, I'm sure. Nortz told me. <laughs> Nortz told me. Don't worry, chat. I know all the information. Are you going to watch the live stream? Oh, man. I would love to. What time is that? I have practice tomorrow. Alien Direct. Yo! It's at 10 a.m. Eastern? Won't it be like seven hours? Oh god. If there's a highlights video, I'll react to it. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Oh god, all the re- Oh my god, we do live in the stupidest timeline. And I'm part of the problem. 
Chat, think about how many React streamers and TikTokers are going to watch the Alien reveal. And I'm not talking about tomorrow. I mean, let's say aliens do eventually show up in our, like, fucking lives. And people are going to be like, yo, aliens is real. Let's go. <laughs> Ignite the atmosphere. We have to cure them. We have a castaway, but one of the castaways is made of leaves, so we need to cure them. Anyway, the point is I will do some reaction. Don't worry. Um, if there's a highlight of tomorrow's presentation, or at the very least, I'll just talk about it. With my extensive knowledge of, of uh, fake alien no uh, lore, uh, that you know, of which I have an entire shelf of my bookcase devoted to. Real fake alien lore that cannot ever be confirmed. That's that's my favorite. A spaceship in disrepair. It's missing its captain. They're probably out there somewhere in need of rescue. We gotta find them. New training course. Ochi can help if he learns pluck. I've also added some training to beef up his dig skill so he can dig faster than ever. I don't know, that doesn't seem that great. The pluck skill. Pluck is quality of life. Um, buff and chomp I like. Dig is good for Dandori. In command. Use this skill to tell your partner to go to your base or call them to you. I'm probably not even going to use it as much as I'd like to, but... Hi! Hi! The ball. Nintendo games always have someone that goes, Hoi! Or, hi! <laughs> Just every time! Every game! Goodbye! <laughs> Rush boots. Hell yeah. Air armor. Harden your spacesuit against damage. Homesick signal. When they go missing, call them back to the SS Beagle. Works on any Pikmin not currently in your squad. I mean, I probably don't need that. I already have, uh, something. To call them to me. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm fast now. I need to kill some more creatures. I mean, find more creatures. Vinny, if you were a video game NPC, what grunts would you make? Uh, play Vine Worlds and Vine Realms to find out.
got oh no! That'll be one of them. Let's take a look at Serene Shores. It's long loading. Uh, you might need the buff upgrade for this place's treasure. Ugh. Ugh. Could always get that next time. I wonder if that loading time was just shaders. Doesn't Unreal Engine still kind of have a shader caching problem? I think the new engine is they're working on the shader issue. Keep in mind, I barely know what I'm talking about, but I think I read something about that. Shader caching is a hard problem in general. The year is 2023 and we still have games stuttering when you first enter a new area. Whoa, fuck off! Oh, hell no! Hell no! down there, fe uh, fella? Oh, right, you can do this. I forgot about that. Vinny needs blue Bickman. I, I don't know where to get them. Okay, they have to stay in- oh wait, no they don't. Oh, that's a very short amount of time. Just going back into the first area to get blue Pikmin ASAP. Is that where they, they are? They're in area number one? They're here too. Oh, we'll find him eventually.
Oh, you can you can freeze um, larger bodies of water, but you need more Pikmin. Top the castle. Onion crab. This reminds me of those fucking marbles in Elden Ring. I might have made a terrible mistake here, chat. My, my Bikmin might be getting destroyed by a rock. Oof. Oh no! Oh no! No. That was a- that was Japes! I- 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 I let so many of them die. I let so many of them die. Chad, this is a massacre. This is- this is bad. I've lost half of my Pikmin. More. I've lost more than half in the past two minutes. can no longer defeat this enemy. I don't have the required number of Pikmin. I hath done fucked up. Low tide. Oh, wow. No. I know chat wants me to rewind, but at what point do we just accept our losses? Ooh. 
boy. Yeah. Oh, losing the ice Pikmin is is tough. But chat, I mean, again, we we have to accept sometimes we we make uh, mistakes in life and 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 have our Pikmin fellas die for our mistakes and sins. That requires 100. All right, never mind. Uh I'm also weirdly missing three Pikmin. I think they're trying to carry something. The fuck? What, what was that? Summoning demons. Rain dance. Oh, okay. Okay, that crab is, is not going to stand a chance now, chat. A shrimp. Perfect Dandori right there. Why are uh, Pikmin dying? They're drowning? Why are they- why are they doing that down there? Chat, why are they doing that down there? What are they doing? What are they doing?! I thought they could just take that gold right to the onion. I, I misjudged what was happening.
I'm good at this game. I am I am really good at this game. Astoundingly good. So where do you get more, um, rock and, um, ice Pikmin? Only in caves? <laughs> Only in caves, huh? Wow. I don't even want to see the results screen. Chat, I don't even want to see the results screen. Oh. Bad. It's bad. You hurt Pikmin ten times. One percent progress. Wow. Good thing I lost all those Pikmin for that one percent progress. Okay, we've learned, chat. It's fine. Oh, spicy. Uh, I want to do one one cave before I uh, stop playing today. So, uh, one one more cave. Should I just go to area one? Do the cave on the sand castle. Okay, ah. Uh, <laughs> well, let's turn that 1% into a 10%, shall we? How many Pikmin must die this time? Hopefully none. Definitely none.
Zero. Goose egg. Dancing Pikmin. Below grade discotheque. Disco the Q. This is actually contender for best cave in the game. I is it an uh, extensive cave? Well, it's fine. I missed! up there. Are these like s evil swine things? I guess they're not evil, they're just like life. They're, yeah, they're like hoglets. Again, if a goblet is a cup, is a gob a big cup? Just makes you wonder, doesn't it? When neighbor game. You do realize that when you say neighbor game, you know what game it is, right? I just want to make sure you're clear it's not like the neighbor. Like it's it's the friendly neighborhood Muppet Resident Evil type game. But uh, after this cave, we will play that game. Oh, that's a five ball. Can't jump up here. I sure hope we get some more ice Pikmin or rock Pikmin because that would be nice. Otherwise, these motherfuckers is dead. The incident. We don't. We don't like to think about that. What happened 15 minutes ago? We don't. Li or 10 minutes ago? We don't like to think about that. Those were the dark times.
Day one of Serene Shores? Absolutely not. I don't even remember what happened. Those Pikmins is invincible. I don't know why I said that like that. But I kind of feel like the ones that you find, they can just keep, like, taking hits and not dying. Don't please! On the electric fence. Oh, there was an enemy over there? Well, they took care of it. Yo, it's a guitar pedal. It's an effects pedal. It's a distortion pet. What the fuck? Uh, can my character actually jump on that? Is that that's not electrified, is it? Okay, I got nervous for a moment. If I told you how many distortion pedals I've been through over the years. And not because they no longer work, just because so many of them suck. They just don't sound great. Or I'm just not into them. Uh, boss pedals? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the famous one, right? The, what is it, the DS1 and the DS2? Didn't, uh, Cart Colbin use one of those? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Boop! We're fine. But, um, yeah, I've used that for a while. At one point, um, I had a... Um, a metal muff, which was given to me, and I just, you know, didn't use it. Now, we use it once in a while because it's actually useful. Yeah, there's a distortion. David Gilmore used a muff, a big muff, chat. Not kidding, that's the name of the distortion pedal, and you know, I'm just so used to it for being aware of this pedal for 20-something years. But saying it out loud to a people, to a group of people, at peoples that don't know what one is, really? Or s some of you don't? It's rather bizarre to say that out loud. But yes, a, a Big Muff. That's how he got his uh, signature guitar solo uh, tone for like Comfortably Numb and like Time. Well, maybe not Comfortably Numb, but specifically Time. Big Muff, chat. Big Muff. Muff. Uh, for a long time I was using the JHS Superbolt, which is a good one. It's not really working with my amp at the moment. Uh, it's, a, it's okay. I also have a blues driver. Some of you know what these things are. Blues driver, I don't love, but again, different amplifiers and different guitars work better or worse depending on the pedal like uh what i mean by that is the pedal works better or worse depending on the guitar and the amp 
And uh, currently I'm using a pedal that Joe had for a while called the Jekyll and Hyde. Which has two foot switches. And so you can do two different types of, of distortions. And it's a really, really good one for my Strat and also my Fender Twin Deluxe. Now, again, some of you know what these words mean. No, none of these words were in the Bible. Jelkel and Hyde. <laughs> Vinny, are you a fan of fuzz? I have a, uh, the Kevin Parker fuzz pedal. What is it? Oh, fuck. Yeah, I don't, I don't really use it a ton, but I have a couple songs coming out in the future that will have fuzz, fuzz pedals on them. I forget which pedal I have, but uh, I haven't used it in a long ass time. Do you have a Wawa? My Wawa pedal broke. I had the Crybaby Wawa. That's the name of it. It's the famous one. And it fucking broke. I have an Ottawa, which just does it for you. You don't have to use your foot to do it. What the f fuck is any of this? New Pikmins. What are they doing in there? Huh. May as well get in too. Stuck in an infinite loop. I uh. Oh, I see, I see, I see. One day I'll figure out how to, uh, how to get up there.
that's how you do it. Winged Pikmin. They can fly? They fly now? The variety of Pikmin types never ceases to amaze me. Let me look these up. Um, as their name suggests, winged Pikmin have sprouted wings and can fly. Of course, this means they can transport things by air and can save time that way. Their ground attacks are lackluster, but when it comes to aerial combat, they're unmatched. These Pikmin are worth their weight in gold. And thus, I will get them all killed. I can kind of already see that happening. we go. Really sucks you can only have three types of Pikmin out at a time. Yeah. Boy, my tinnitus got worse. It got better, and then it got worse. For a couple of months there, I wasn't really noticing it as much. And now I'm noticing it a whole lot, and I... I... Don't... And my hearing is fine, so this is... This is still neurological. I don't know why I'm even saying this. Because I, I know the reactions... Oh. That people have are either, you know, who cares, or... To overly be concerned. I'm fine, but during that moment there, I just, I noticed it. I mean, it might just be back to the level it was last year. But yeah, for a little while there, it was okay, and I wasn't really using as much white noise, and I was, like, able to, uh, You know, like, even, like, a little bit of noise would kind of drown it out, and then I think... I, I really, and it's weird because I do think this one was COVID-related. The timing is exactly that. So... I wonder if any time I'm, like, this is a dumb theory, and please, this has no merit in any type of reality whatsoever, so don't take me. This is one of those, um... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little, a bit of a neurotic thought, but I'm going to say it anyway, out loud. Just to think out loud, but... I wonder if... Like, if I was exposed to the, the COVID again, in some way, and it reactivated the tinnitus and made it worse. But I just didn't know I was exposed to the Ovid. Now, that could be, again, no basis in reality or science or anything. It's just a theory I had. Um, luckily, theories are dumb. Well, they can be, sometimes. Mine are. But I guess the point I'm trying to say is, um... Who knows? But, for those that haven't heard the tale, I'll, I'll tell you one quick time. I got COVID last year, around August of last year, and I noticed when it was over, I had a new tone of tinnitus. It's somewhere in the, like, 13k range. And my normal tinnitus from, like, just years of listening to loud music and concerts without earplugs. That is, um... You know, that's, like, kind of minor. That's, like, completely, completely silent room. But this one is pretty much almost anywhere. So I, you know, it scared me, so I went to, um, oral surgeon, 
checked for TMJ. No TMJ. Went to... Oh, God. Uh, went to a... Um, ENT. And my hearing for my age is actually phenomenal. They said. Like, my tests were all very, very good. All the results were good. So that's good. Like, that's, you know, I liked hearing that. I now wear earplugs to every concert I go to. And in practice and everything. So I'm careful. But yeah, this seems... This one is uh, weird. It sucks. I'm fine. I'll, I'll be okay. At least I have a very specific white noise that helps. And I can actually experience a little bit of, like, not silence, but the, the white noise replaces it. it um, so I have that going for me. Uh, but yeah, it kind of blows. I'll actually, here, I'll play it for you. Uh, mute if you don't want to hear this, because then, you know. I could understand why people maybe wouldn't want to hear it, because it might activate their own. But, uh, this is the one that I, I use at the moment. It's quite nice. It may not sound that nice to some of you, but to me, totally replaces it. And if I keep it real low, it's just like kind of a nice like white noise to have on. I've slept with white noise my whole life anyway. So I don't I like white noise. I always any anytime I go anywhere, I bring a uh, white noise machine. Well, a fan uh, so I have a fa oh, uh, right, I have to activate things here. So I have a fan that also has a speaker and that generates white noise. And I have the actual thing with like a little fan in it. Oh, that's- I see. I understand the point of the screw now. I need the yellow fellas. Where are they? Oh, there they are. No, Ochi! Oh, that's cool. I was wondering what the fuck that was. Yeah, this this is this is good stuff. This cave is, is good stuff. I know I kind of made a, a comparison to Zelda dungeons earlier, and while I don't think that's 100% true, like or the comparison isn't 100% accurate, it, it's kind of accurate. I mean, there's puzzles. They're like self-contained little, like, puzzle zones that you spend some time in. You get treasure. You get new Pikmin. 
So that's like finding a new item almost. I mean, it's it's a very it's a very big stretch of a comparison, but but yeah. Such a, such a satisfying feeling. You can tell he desperately wants this to be Zelda. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I just got a big Zelda game. I'm, I'm good. One more floor, and then we can play the neighbor game. How do you sleep in the city with cars and other noises? Staten Island is not Manhattan. Manhattan is the uh, city that you're thinking of when you think New York City. Staten Island is much more suburban. There's trees. There's like, you know, quiet for the most part. It can still be a little noisy from time to time, but it's nowhere near what you're like what you're thinking. I think. Oh god, it's the discotheque. I get it now. Well, not really, but Oh shit. I don't understand. Wait, 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 wait. What, what was the best option? Holy shit. Chat, I, I fucking destroyed that boss. Wow. 
I mean, I had to completely, completely miserably fail at it the first time. But after that, I learned. See, that's that's the the other thing is learning and Dandori and friendship and all that. I like that boss a lot. That was that's a memorable one. Why did that particular Pikmin just eat shit and fail? Pikachu. Petunia. Highly focused and intelligent, she joined the team to investigate mysterious creatures through her unconventional methods. Uh oh. Experimentation. Combining a red Pikmin with a blue Pikmin. It's like a Franken Pikmin. Stitched at the seams. Bloody. Combine yellow, red, and blue so it has a nose, ears, and a mouth. Maybe then it will live a life. Small human. A Pikmin sentient. That's a very good question. Are there any Pikminologists in the chat? The long ass loading screen. Alright, um, chat, the game has saved, yeah? Like, right here, perhaps? Great. Well... Dog just sneezed. Uh, so yeah, game is great, really enjoying it. It's a hard game to put down. And perhaps I will play more sometime. Uh, maybe even for longer. But yeah, this this is a really, really fun game. And I... I think worth the wait, perhaps. This I should probably delete. Would you like to delete your save data for Pikmin 4? Alright. Chat, we'll take a break. I'll be right back. Stick around, and I will return with my friendly neighborhood. So, here it is. The break. <laughs> 